going on family i pray all is well with everybody as we all talk you know what i'm about to say give the holy spirit all the honor the glory and definitely all praise and worship my title says it's too many impersonators um this is actually a video a video response back to you um sister rita about ministry um and actually what i'm speaking on is not just in ministry um, in in the body of Christ is also in the world. You know, there's so many people trying to be like somebody else that they don't even know who they are. And the Bible tells us that all good gifts, notice I put the word good in there, come from above. And when you spend so much time mimicking somebody, impersonating somebody else, you never really learn who you are. You never have your own creativity. And if you notice in the gospel field, so many people preach alike. They dance alike. They speak in tongues alike. They pray alike. And somebody's going to say, well, JT, that's, you know, that's them being on one accord. No, first of all, you will notice with spiritual discernment, people who are on one accord. They actually got people that try to teach you how to speak in tongues. Or just like I was saying about Juanita Bynum, she got that book out trying to teach you how to pray. That's $1,400 some dollars. And being a musician, I see so many musicians who always want to be like, they idolize somebody else, want to play like somebody else, even want to dress like somebody else, want to be that somebody else. I see young men who's preaching now and, and they always want to preach like somebody else, dress like that preacher, talk like that preacher, walk like that preacher. And man cannot give you a gift. Now, what mankind can do is, is help play an impact on bringing your gift out. But the gift is already given to you. And if you don't know what your gift is, you got to really pray and take that up with the Holy Spirit for him to show you what your gift is. You know what I mean? The people tell me they don't know what their gift is or they don't understand why they're here. They don't know what their purpose is. And when I think about that, that's why it make, it brings me to this, this title because a lot of people idolize somebody else. A lot of people have learned behavior. They It's like that video they posted not too long ago of that young man that was preaching in the pulpit, right? And he was so busy worrying about the organ player because he was so busy worrying about singing the sermon, singing the sermon, trying to get in the right key, telling the organ player to change keys, that it totally threw him off from the sermon. And then the elder came over there and said, man, just preach. Don't worry about the organ. Just preach. Now catch what I'm about to say. The elder told him just preach and don't worry about the organ. But that young man, that's all he was probably brought up in was that learned behavior of watching the older generation hoop and holler. Why do you think so many of the younger generation who are preachers and pastors now, they have that same learned behavior of, of hooping and hollering and preaching, or they mimic their bishop, they mimic their elder who, who ordained them and laid hands on them. See, a lot of people go to seminary school and, and they teach you certain things in certain ways in the seminary school to do it when you come out of the school. And that's why so many preachers preach the same way. They shout the same way. They dance the same way. They 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 got that same mentality and the traditions of men. I ain't talking about all pastors because there are some pastors who are totally set apart and separated from that. And there are people that can impersonate good. And you got people saying because they can impersonate somebody, they anointed. That's my one of my biggest issues in, 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 the, in the ministry. So many people calling people anointed just because they can sing, just because they can pray and preach and sing a sermon, they automatically anointed. It don't work like that. They don't put a new definition on the word anointed. 
And I know I'm make a lot of people mad with this video, but that's fine. That's why in the in the churches now, mostly what you see is entertainment. You see people showing out, performing. I mean, just look at look at look at what's on social media now. It ain't it ain't nowhere close to what it used to be, the way they used to have church. And I'm not saying everybody had it figured out right, but you saw more back then of sticking close to holiness versus what you see now. Man, right now, you, you I mean, look at the church now. The church looks just like the club. Dress just like you're in the club. And the children are mimicking that same learned behavior. You know how many people say that their child is anointed my child got the Holy Spirit, and really what that child have is, is learned behavior. Because that child is member. I get so sick of them posting these videos with these little boys with the learned behavior of preaching and hooping and hollering and done memorize a sermon and kicking like the like the pastor who was their daddy doing and people cheering that stuff on me. You don't post, you don't play around like that. The Holy Spirit is the one that qualifies the one he called. Some people are pastors and evangelists and prophets and, and, and apostles, all these titles, and the Holy Spirit ain't called them, ain't called them. What they are doing is impersonating. When you go back, I just told my old man this, and I mean no disrespect this video, I'm just speaking facts. When you look at Creflo Dollar, when you look at a lot of these older um ones before Creflo and then if you if you go back. And do the research on. I'm, I'm gonna give you a, a man I always talk about. I ain't said his name in years. Leroy Thompson. If you go back and look at that foolishness that Leroy Thompson was doing on them videos, all that money coming to me, money coming to me, brainwashing people with that money coming to me. Who did you see run on the stage where they was throwing all that money on the stage? And, and then here come Creflo Dollar running out of nowhere, and he runs. This is an old video. He runs up there and kick through the money and act the fool with the man. That's why when you look at them, them mega preachers, look at what they all have the same thing, real estate, Bentleys, mansions, Rolls Royces, jets, because they mimic what somebody else was doing. But they claim to be preaching the same word, but they won't preach for free. Y'all got to catch what I'm saying. So impersonating people, even, like I say, even in the world, look at how many young men want to be like LeBron James. They idol, when you start idolizing somebody, man, that's that's serious. That's serious issues. That's the money. Or even when Michael Jordan was playing, I want to be, I want to be like Mike. I ain't never want to be like Mike. I ain't never want to be like LeBron. I ain't never want to be like no musician that, 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 that I know. And it's I want to be like what the Holy Spirit designed me to be. He created me. He know me better than me. And that's why a lot of people don't know who they are. Because they too busy trying to be somebody else. That's why I'm not intimidated by nobody. I don't care how many degrees you got. I don't care what school you went to. And I'm talking about the piano or the word of the Holy Spirit. I didn't go to school for the piano. I didn't go to school for the word. And I'm not saying this with my chest stuck out and being arrogant. I'm not intimidated by nobody because I'm not in this for no show. I ain't in this for no show. No show. What they call it, show, shape, or form, or fashion. I'm not in it for that. That's why I be on there all the time, pouring my heart out and, 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 and doing what the Holy Spirit blessed me to do. Somebody got to be set apart. We got enough money hungry, begging preachers. But when you get to the point where you mimic somebody so much, you impersonate them so much, and, if, and you incorporate that in you, what you do, you will become. I remember this brother who was so crazy about Jamal Bryant long time ago. His whole style became Jamal Bryant. 
he could mimic and impersonate Jamal Bryant so good that he never didn't know who he who himself was. Man, I ain't trying to preach like nobody else. I got mad when people kept comparing me and comparing me with Stephen Darby, Pastor Darby of Destin Ministry. My big brother made the most high rest his soul. I had to check a few people on that. I'm not Pastor Darby. Pastor Darby was not JT. Yeah, we look alike. Yeah, we speak about some of the same stuff, but it's not a competition. I love that man dearly. Love that man dearly. And I learned and still learn from watching his old videos. But it's not a competition. And that's what I loved about Pastor Darby because Pastor Darby was really, truly a set-apart pastor that was not hooping and hollering and, and letting anybody come in there and, and mess up his church. He was truly a man of the Holy Spirit who did things different and spoke on things half of these preachers out here wouldn't dare talk about. He warned people. He went against Hollywood. Awesome man of the Holy Spirit. But it was no competition. But JT, you was on here longer than Pastor Doug. We didn't know about you, but it don't matter. I was constantly sending people pages to sending people to Pastor Darby page. Still do. And I hate that people think ministry is a competition. They 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 always want to make somebody look better than somebody else. When in, when in reality, we all bring something to the table. Like my brother, my brother Steve, we say, many members, but one body. You do what the Holy Spirit have blessed you to do. And that was my prayer years ago. Holy Spirit, show me me. Show me me. I don't want to be like everybody else. I love when people tell me, man, you ain't like these other musicians. Thank you. Thank you for telling me that. I love when I hear that. I can't stand the way I see these musicians. And I ain't talking about all of them, but I, it's, it's spirits behind what they're doing. And the singers. Men, men dressing like tuck men. I never thought in my life I would see so many men dressing with revealing tight clothes on, being hit on by other men. Never thought I would live today to see that. And I see it. This, this feminine spirit, homosexuality all over in the churches and don't nobody want to address it. But when I say something about it, I'm the enemy. I'm the bad man. If that's what you want to call me, label me that then. I'm going to stand on holiness. I love when people come on here and say, man, you ain't like such and such, man. Or you ain't like these buildings I've been going to. Thank you. Because the Bible says for us to be set apart. It ain't about what you call yourself, Baptist, holiness, Pentecost to AME, CME, non denominator all them titles, man, that don't mean nothing. That's why I love when people call me JT. You ain't got to put no prophet in front of my name, doctor in front of my name, bishop in front of my name, elder in front of my name, overseer in front of my name, prophet. Uh, you better, you show, but not put no apostle and prophet in front of my name. And, and doctor, hey, you can go online and buy a title for your name now and be doctor. I don't care nothing about none of that. As long as I've been in there, you see my screen say what? Jero 24. Man, it's sad what it has became. But we was already warned all these things was going to happen. So many people want to be like somebody else. And when they when they can't be like that person, it's driving them crazy. I tell people all the time, be you. You can mimic child, man, children can mimic grown people so good. They can mimic you so good. They can mimic your prayer. They can mimic your, they can mimic your singing. They can mimic all your movements. You got to be, and, and, and I'm not saying this to, 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 to down nobody. But I'm just saying, you got to be careful when you're talking about my child. My child has the Holy Spirit, and that child just ha have learned behavior. Oh, JT, don't ever say nothing like that. My child is. My child got the Holy Spirit. See, the reason why I say that, let me let me clarify that. Because who was that in the Bible um, when, they was, when they was young? Uh, I want to say that was Samuel. And Samuel didn't recognize who the Holy Spirit was. The Holy Spirit 
had to use, uh, I want to say Eli, because his name kept being called, and he thought it was it was Eli. And Eli had to tell him, it's the Holy Spirit. And it's a whole lot to learn in that right there, which show you it's a it's a learning process. You don't just you don't just oh I got the Holy Spirit overnight. I got the Holy Spirit when I'm three years old, one years old, five years. It's a process because he did not even know who was calling him, his name. That's why you got to be careful with my child has the Holy Spirit. For all you know, your child looks up to you. Who's the one taking care of you? In so many ways, if you think about it, your child look up to you as a God in so many ways until they learn who God is. Because God is the one, Holy Spirit is the one that takes care of us. Your children depend on you. They don't know who the Holy Spirit is in, in so many ways. And I and I know people are going to disagree with me with saying that. That's why I'm directing you to the Bible with, 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 with Samuel. I believe it was Samuel. He did not know who was calling his name. The Holy Spirit had to use a, a man to deliver him the message. He kept saying, Eli, it wasn't Eli. And Eli had to recognize and tell him and recognize it's the Holy Spirit. People have to learn these things. Mimicking and impersonating. You, you ever wonder why, and I close with this, you ever wonder why so many actors, when they take on a lot of roles, after a while, they become who they acting, even if they impersonate somebody else. And when you interview them, they'll say, man, I had to come out of myself. I came out of myself. And the acting start really going to their head and messing with their life. Because they are doing it constantly. It wears, it wears them down. And that's why I always told Holy Spirit, I'm not trying to be like, like nobody else. When I became a crossing guard over in Highland Park, my uncle was there for years. And when my uncle was gone, he left. They said, JT, he's JT too. He's Jimmy Thompson. I'm Jerome Thompson. They said, you got some huge shoes to fill. You got some big shoes to fill. I said, let me stop y'all right there. I'm only trying to fulfill my own shoes. I'm not Uncle Jimmy. I don't act like Uncle Jimmy. Thank the Holy Spirit definitely for that. I'm not trying to be Uncle Jimmy. I'm going to be exactly who I am as the Holy Spirit designed me to be. Only shoes I'm fitting is my own. Because people, a lot of times, want you to be a people pleaser. They want you to cater to folks' needs. That's not me. I'm not that man. I'm not that type of guy. I got to be me. The only, only, only way I know how to be is me. And a lot of people can't stand me because of me and who I am. And I, I don't, I don't, I just don't settle. I make a lot of people mad with the way I am because I'm straight up. I don't hold my tongue. I, I, I don't care if you got a bishop in front of your name. You better ask some of these pastors about me. I'm raw and uncut out of love in a good way. I don't, I don't care what your title is. I don't care what your, your status is, how many members you got, you 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 put me in a room with you, I'm going to tell you exactly the way it is. Because I'm not going to look at your title. I'm going to be looking at the Holy Spirit. And that's what's wrong with a lot of people nowadays. They think if somebody got a big title in front of oh, that's a bishop. Uh, boy, the Bible, the Bible, the Holy Spirit say, I am not a respecter of persons. And our job is to call out this mess, rebuke it, teach correct. But there's so many people in the body of Christ, they cannot do that. They won't do that. They scared to do that. It's only a few that will, will stand bold like that and, and people get mad at you. Not everybody, of course. But you should, you should want somebody in your corner like that. Too many musicians, once again, impersonating, trying to play like... You know what 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 I hate too that it's so many singers 
they want to mimic the singer that they love so much, they idol so much, they mess up a whole song. Just like when I play the piano, I'm simple. It don't you know? Because I know it's some musicians listening. Because I'm talking about I'm talking about it all in general. Don't you know musicians mess up songs all the time by doing too much? Don't you know drummers mess up so much all the time by ripping on the drums too much, doing stuff at the wrong time? Don't you know keyboard players sometimes all you need is just simple major chords, simple minor chords. Sometimes simple is just best because once you kill a song with trying to show everybody how fancy you can play, and then look at this when you have a bad attitude with it. That's why I can't play with everybody. We don't suppose to play with everybody. And I know I just made at least 50 musicians mad with what I just said right there. Because it's a, it's some musicians out here, man, the attitude is so bad. They may be cold with their playing, but you can't get along with them. Trust me, I know. Went through a bunch of them. I've been an MD for a long time. And I ain't talking about medical doctor. I'm talking about music director. Dealing with choirs and groups and praise teams and, and being in and out of studios, dealing with artists. And man, it's a headache in the hand. You're going to see attitudes and don't let them be drinking and smoking behind it. That's why I left a lot of stuff alone, y'all. Alone, y'all. That's why I'm tying this in with the church and the world. You got people that idolize in the church and in the world. Why do you think some of them mega preachers are where they at now? Because they idolize the ones that was doing it before them. The learned behavior. Teaching them how to get rich. I remember one of the most worst up things I heard when I was when I was at the uh, seminary school. Um, they had a, I used to go to the seminary school to play the piano behind their um, engagements they was having. And I remember this one time I was I was at um this, this seminary school. It was at least maybe 30 men in there who was getting ready to be ordained as pastors, as elders, overseers, reverends, as they call it, which I don't agree with that title either. And the bishop had his robe on. And you know what that bishop told all the men? This was in the seminary school. He said, if you don't get the congregation shouting and running around, if you're not hooping and hollering, you haven't done your job. Boy, I thought about that. And it brainwashed every last one of them men. I said, and when them men get out and go to their own church or if they sitting up under somebody, they're going to be messed up, just like the ones that's messed up that's teaching them. They was teaching them traditions of men, learned behavior. When you look at the style of preaching now and look at the Bible, it don't match up. All this singing a sermon and, and hooping and hollering and kicking the podium and running around, tag teaming and high-fiving, Christ never spoke that way. Peter never spoke that way. Paul never spoke that way. The Bible shows us that the Holy Spirit is always in order. Always. The Holy Spirit don't run around and make you clown and act no fool and run over people and hit the wall. That is not the Holy Spirit. Those are demons. Demonic spirits. And that's what you see to, to this day. They're still going on. Learn behavior, impersonating somebody and idolizing somebody. This is my, my son in the ministry. And the son in the ministry, nine times out of 10, mimic and go down the same road and do the same thing that the bishop did, the one that, that he called his father in the ministry. See, some people just want to ordain somebody to say, this is my son in the ministry. This is my daughter in the ministry. The question is, were they chosen by the Holy Spirit? If not, you are not called. And it's sad. We got a church, we got churches full of 
satanic preachers called by Satan, satanic musicians who claim to do the will of the Father. It's sad, y'all. This is what the Holy Spirit laid on my heart this morning. Learn behavior has messed up so many people. Last night on that live chat, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to wrap the video up with this. This is why we start talking about the word cursed. And I made a point about learned behavior. How you can choose to do with your mama or your daddy or whoever your loved ones that didn't have it figured out and was wrong and wicked. You can choose to go down the same path. Learn behavior. A lot of people wind up being just like they parents, not because they was cursed, because of what they choose to do. And that's why I made it clear once again, when you talk about the Bible, the curse is up to the third and fourth generation. It's over with right there. You are no longer responsible for the sins of your father. Father is no longer responsible for the sins of his son, his family. You have to work out your, why you think the Bible say you have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We all got to give an account of our life. That ain't going to be no good excuse. Oh, the Spirit rejects excuses anyway. You're going to stand and give an account of your life, and you're going to say, well, Father, because, it, because I was cursed. My daddy was cursed. My mama, Jenna Ray, was cursed. And you know what the Holy Spirit was going to say? What was the whole point of me sending my son to die on the cross and said it is finished? It is finished. He done his part. What are we doing? See how the Holy Spirit is leading me to say certain things in this video that I hope people catch because this is more deeper than just talking about impersonating somebody as musicians and, and preachers and in the world. If you're going to mimic somebody, mimic Christ with your life, his example, have the fruit of the spirit. Do that. Be set apart. Paul said, my desire is to know him. For Christ I live, for Christ I die. How many people going to do that, say that, live like that? Set apart, holy. If you're going to call yourself mimicking somebody, I ain't, like I said earlier, I ain't trying to be like Mike. I want to be like Christ. How many people want to be like that? How many people want to suffer? How many people want to get talked about? How many people want to get called a demon? How many people want to get persecuted? How many people want to really be lied on and not even accepted in their own? Mm. That's why when you sign up for this, oh, let it, let it. Oh, fuck, we say, let the games begin. Oh, yeah. The day you decided to give your life over to the Holy Spirit, all oh, Satan came in full effect now. Trying to get you back to where you used to be. Trying to get you to fall with him. And that's why I'm going to continue to expose the devil. He's going to continue to throw them attacks at me. And I'm going to keep catching all my curls on the Holy Spirit. He's going to keep attacking my family. But I got something for him. Man don't live off of bread alone. But every word that come out of the mouth of the Father. And when you do that, put that word on Satan, he going to flee. Oh, he going to be back. But every time he come back or send his posse, let me say it like that, you put that word on. But you can't put something on the devil that you don't have or you don't know. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't have nothing to protect and cover you. You can't. 
you can't put on the whole arm if you don't know what the whole arm is. And you can't be half dressed. You got to be in all the way or not in at all. And the Holy Spirit has never been looking for no cowards. He said, my righteousness is as bold as a lion. That's why he chooses the bold people that the that the that the Christians a lot of times disagree with. Because they don't look like you, they don't dress like you, they don't look like your pastor, they don't sound like your pastor, they look too, they look too different, too gangster to you. They they don't they don't wear a suit, they don't fit the profile. That ain't what the Holy Spirit is looking for, because salvation is an inside job, not an outside job. It ain't about if the man got on a suit or not, whether this friend lady got on hats and dresses or not. The most high chooses who he uses. He uses who he chooses. He'll pick that ordinary person that you wouldn't even think about and use them to be full effect in ministry. And why did you just say that like this, JT? That's why I ain't trying to be like nobody else. I'm not trying to have the big mega church the big mega mess because I know if you got a hundred people probably eight of them ain't gonna even be right for you you might have that 20 at 20 percent but I guarantee you 80 percent are against you Christ chose the 12. Ordinary, common, imperfect men. And we all know the story of Judas. The Holy Spirit chose Israel. But we all know the story of the backslide. The idol worship. The I don't know how many messed up kings. So why am I saying it also as I close? Be careful what you pray for. Be careful what you ask it for. Because the question is, is it for you? Is it of the most high? And did the most high send it your way? And on that note, I love y'all. Have a wonderful, blessed day. This is the way the word came out this morning. And I'm just being obedient. No disrespect toward nobody. If you took it the wrong way, I don't know what to tell you. But I love you. And I will continue to pray for you. And y'all have a wonderful, wonderful Blessed day. Shalom.